The Pacific Northwest Reptile and Exotic Animal Show is coming to Puyallup this weekend. It is the largest and longest running reptile show in the Pacific Northwest, and we've already kicked off the party here, apparently. I am low-key <laughs> panicking. Can you see yeah. the fear in my face? Actually, these little fellas are adorable and very calm. I'm yeah. still nervous, y'all. Yeah. Joining us today to tell us more about the show and introduce us to some more friends, we have Director of Operations Jeff Hoffman and his son Carter. Hello, guys. How I you guess. doing? Doing well. Good. You no. look so casual with that snake behind you. What? I know. Well, I want to make sure you guys name? notice. Steve. 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 Do Hello? these little guys have a name? Yeah. Um, you can name them whatever you like. Oh. Those ones are currently oh, without name. This is Barley. Name. There we go. Barley. It rhymes with Carly, and we just had beer. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is uh, George. Barley good, and George. Good. Are yeah. they boys or they're girls? They're both girls. Oh, they're oh, both Georgette. That's it's fine. okay. It's, it's fine. 2023. <laughs> you can <laughs> be named whatever you want. Uh, so, Jeff, you travel around the Pacific Northwest. Um, tell us about what people can expect to see. So, it's the largest reptile show in the Pacific Northwest. We have over 150 vendors this time. It's like any vendors other Vendors meaning you sell them? Or? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah okay. most of them are for sale along with all the equipment needed mm -hmm. for their proper care. Okay. Uh, we have... Uh, you know, it's like any other trade show where you have individual vendors. So you have one vendor that has primarily primarily geckos, another with maybe just bearded dragons, another with snakes, um, and then there are other interactive options for the whole family. So if uh, oh, I see a fennec fox on the screen too. Do we yeah, get different kinds the, of animals yeah, too? Yes. So the the mammal side is is variable. This time we'll, there will for sure be at least a kangaroo that you can get in with and spend a some time. Kangaroo. With. Yeah, yeah. And it, I've never met a kangaroo before. You can this weekend. Okay. Excellent. So let's. We got lots of visitors. So let's get to that. Who okay. are we meeting today? Oh. So. <laughs> okay. Oh. What you have. Gosh. What you have there okay. is an African fat tail gecko. Uh, what you I have right so here. Much? Okay. Yeah. Because uh, I'm nervous, my man. <laughs> I'm very nervous. This is a gargoyle gecko. Okay. Um, this is a bearded dragon. These are all pretty common pet species. This is actually one of the more common pet species of snake, too. This is a Colombian boa. So this is the classic pet oh. snake. Okay. Oh, okay. This is also a Colombian boa. It's just an albino form. Did, did this so snake get along? Yes. Well, yeah. They're not aggressive toward one another. They have okay. separate enclosures. Are they dangerous to people or are they safe to be no, around? No, no. You, you would be a lot worse off with a dog or a cat bite, to be honest. Really? And, and obviously, as you can see, they have no reason to bite. Oh, my goodness. Um, they're in captivity, so they're yep. used to human interaction. Nice. Have oh. you always loved animals? or? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. This is wild. So you have any of these that you can interact with at the show. Um, there are breeders from all over the Pacific Northwest that you can talk to about proper care. Mm -hmm. And then if you so choose, you could take one home with you as well. Do wow. a lot of people buy the exotic animals yeah. at the... Mo most people are going there to find a new pet or new animal for themselves. And, and again, you're talking with experts in the area. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, in between the shows, you have their contact info for any questions you need for follow-up. Okay. So it's really a great community of support and networking. Oh. All right. This has been really amazing. So we are going to take a quick break, and we will be right back with you guys. All Sounds right? Good.
Um, we took it up a notch. <laughs> Maria really <laughs> took, took it, it up, up a notch. notch. You've got a snake scarf on right now. I got now. a snake uh, scarf. I can't even talk, girl. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. Steve has been very gentle, but I am sweating a lot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we are back with uh, our friends here with reptiles, and let's talk a little more about what you guys have. I feel like my mic's getting covered up. <gasps> oh, my gosh. So... Oh, uh, so this is a this is a Colombian boa. Mm -hmm. They are found in South South Africa. America. America. Close. Mm -hmm. Yep. Close. Close. So yeah, again, this is the traditional boa constrictor, like the song. Okay. Uh -huh. But they won't swallow you alive. They, Good. They don't actually get that big, uh, and you can see they're very tractable too. So they, they uh, despite their size, they do make pretty common and good pets. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are reticulated pythons. These are actually the longest snake in the world eventually. Really? How long do they get? Uh, easily 20 feet on average. So these oh. are little babies. Yes, these are babies. And these are the exact same color morph except one is albino and, and one is still melanistic. So do people typically buy them when they're babies and then have them grow themselves? Most that, often. Yeah. Most often, yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and again, any of these that are offered at the show, uh, they're, they're bred by the vendors that have them. They are very knowledgeable people. They'll give you all the information you need. They'll direct you, direct you to where you, you can go for equipment if, if they don't have it themselves. Yeah. So it's kind of an all-in-one shop. Got it. How did you guys get into this? Oh, I started, I had a box turtle when I was 10, and then I just yeah. developed from there. Wow. And then I kind of wrangled him into it. So He started... Uh he started selling animals. He started buying them, then braiding them, then mm -hmm. selling them. Okay. And, and talk to me about yeah, how uh, different it is to have a reptile as a pet versus something more traditional. So <laughs> realistically, in a lot of ways, it's it's easier. Uh, you know, they they have <laughs> they have enclosures of the house. Most of them aren't needing you know multi, mul needing to be fed multiple times a day. So if you go to the coast for the weekend with your family, they're pretty self sufficient as long as you have them set up right. So in a lot of ways, it's simpler. They don't uh, have dander that people are allergic to uh, and you know it's it's a unique aspect bringing nature into your home and mm -hmm. having it thrive so mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of joys that come with some of the challenges of, of, of keeping something different than a traditional mm -hmm. pet. Yeah. What would you say is the most popular reptile pet? <laughs> uh, so probably bearded dragons. Yeah. Which is what I have? Yeah. That's, what okay. have. that's one yep. of the most popular. Um, right after that would be ball pythons, which I didn't bring any of, mm -hmm. but there will be thousands there. Literally Can you thousands. tell us some more interesting facts about these reptiles? Um, sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm doing okay. So I'm sorry. I'm those sorry. Colombian <laughs> boas, they're a constrictor, same as this. The same as these reticulated pythons. Okay. Constrictors subdue their prey by asphyxiating them, squeezing yeah. them to death. Uh, yes, yeah, Steve but, was hugging me a second ago. <laughs> but that, that's, that's, Hugging's a nice word. <laughs> that's because he was absorbing your body heat because they are cold-blooded. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Nice. That's so, so interesting. So he's not trying to squeeze you to death. Oh, well, okay. I appreciate it, Steve. <laughs> he's a gentleman. Uh, <laughs> chivalry is not dead. No, no, not when it comes to Steven. <laughs> um, uh, th those bearded dragons are from Australia. So they're running around in the outback. They're taking shelter in bushes when it's, you know, 115 degrees out plus. Yeah. So they're incredibly durable. So they, so they can thrive in cold and hot Not environments? Not cold so much. You just room temperature. Room temperature. A, you, you don't even want them at room temperature for, for that long. So oh. for a segment like this, it's fine, but then they're gonna, he's going to get right back on heat before, before yeah. he's too cold for too long. Yeah. Well, this has been a very <laughs> memorable day. <laughs> I will never for you, even. forget this. <laughs> oh um, guys, thank you so much thank for joining for us. us. Jeff, it. Carter, congratulations on working with these wonderful animals. And you can catch them at the Pacific Northwest Reptile and Exotic Animal Show at Washington State Fairgrounds this weekend. <laughs> yep, all that info is up on our website, fox13seattle.com slash studio 13 live. And we will be right back with Mari Pili Tap Tapas Bar. We'll be right back.